Hey, welcome back to the show. I thought today I'll try and do an episode to explain exactly how I use an EQ, how I dial them in, how to get the most out of them. So stick around. So there's loads of different EQs out there on the market. You've got your standard graphic style slider EQs, and then you've got your parametric EQs. They both roughly do the same thing. They're just different ways of going about it. But each EQ really does have its own personality. When you push the signals too hard and they start to clip, or when you cut different frequencies, they all have their own specific little nuances and tendencies to all sound different. And that's why I just love EQs so much, and I have so many of them. They all have their strengths and weaknesses in the way that you just want to dial in your specific sound. But my favorite and the one that I've used forever is the MXR6 band. And this is just a really simple EQ. I've got no actual affiliation or endorsements or working with MXR in any way for this video. It's just an EQ that I've used from the very start. I just love the way that it reacts when I push up the signals and it clips and it has its own sort of overdrive when it's in the front end or when it's used in the effects loop, I can just sort of bump certain frequencies. It's just a really versatile EQ, extremely simple to use, get your head around. And it's really never left the pedal board since I've started doing these tone chasing videos. So I'm sure you're aware there's a few different ways that you can run the EQ into the amp. You can either have it going through the front end of the amp or you can have it going through the effects loop. Both methods make the EQ react totally different to each other. In the front end of the amp, you really are just boosting or cutting frequencies that's the signal from your guitar before it actually hits the front face of the amp. So if you cut bass frequencies before it hits the tone stack, you're just going to get a lot tighter of a signal going through the amp. And the same goes if you try and boost some of those mid frequencies going into the amp, you're going to get that half cocked wah sort of sound before it actually goes through the whole tone stack. Using the EQ this way can really just manipulate the amp in the front end just to suit the way that your gain reacts and the way that you're actually pushing your signal. And if you route the EQ through the effects slip, you really are just altering those outboard frequencies like outboard gear in the studio and you're changing the way the amp is actually going to sound on the outside going into a speaker. So boosting or cutting those different frequencies is going to have a totally different sound to using it in the front end. We'll simulate everything and I'll just show you exactly how I use it to get the most out of it. So just before we get started, my basic signal here is my MJ Jackson RR5 2008-2009. Uh, it's got the JB pickup. That's going into the Fortin Zool noise gate, which is going through the effects slip of the Victory VX Kraken Mark II. We're on channel two, pushing a bit of gain here. And the MXR6 band is set neutral and going through the front end of the amp right now. And the signal's been outputted silently through my Two Notes Torpedo Captor X, through my Focusrite Claret, to pre-interface into Logic where we're just recording this. So right now without any color affecting the amp, this is the basic tone. <laughs> And you can hear from there, it's a fairly balanced style tone. It's fairly thick in those mids, it's heavy in the bass. And so to start with, I thought we'll just look at James Hetfield's modern guitar tone, where to me, that's more of like a kick drum style tone more than a snare. It's just got a real heavy thump going on. So to focus more on that kick drum style sound as you're going into the front end of the guitar amp, if you scoop some of these mid frequencies going in, <laughs> So right there you can hear that we've really just got that definition and it's really got that kick drum feel, but I've scooped a little bit too much life out of the front end of that amp. Those mids can just pick up ever so slightly. You really don't have to move much to get drastic results out of this. So you can hear exactly what happens there when you scoop the front end of an amp or the signal going in. You don't get that outboard scoop sound, it's just, it really just flattens the whole signal. But if we go the exact opposite of that, this is where this little EQ comes to life in my opinion. As you push frequencies, this is really where just the different gains happen. They clip differently, they react differently with the front end of amps, and they get their own overdriven sort of tone that comes through. But right now, this is a really basic way that I set this EQ, just to get the right amount of aggression or grind going on in that front end. <laughs> 
It really does seem to boost that front end of the amp, so you might have to back a little bit of the gain off just to keep things nice and clear. <laughs> And that right there you can hear such a transformation with that amp and if we continue to push these frequencies going all the way up make it look more like a sharper arrowhead things start to really sound more like that cracked sort of cocked wah pedal and this is more like the way that don bagdara would push the front end of his amp and everything that he had was really pushing those mid frequencies his dime bucker or the bill lawrence was really just pushing those mid frequencies from his guitar going to the MXR6, everything was just boosting out and then going to the PQ3 or PQ4, boosting some more mids. But on the actual amp that he was running, he was scooping the mids on the amp just to counter all that. But you still end up with that really aggressive sort of half cock sound. <laughs> And things start to get a little bit out of control when you start pushing the EQs just a little bit much. Like certain frequencies just really start to scream and pop and a lot of noise is made. But you get the idea just there and there's loads of gain to be had. Something else to consider as well, if I just turn that off for a second. So that's a really thick style sort of guitar tone right there. And if I was to drop tune right now without adjusting the amp at all, things might just start getting a little bit flabby. And so to counteract that, it's pretty simple, just the signal going in. You can actually use this as a unit just, just to tighten up your guitar sound and give a slight bump to those mid frequencies. It's almost like the same way that you react and you dial in a Mesa Mark series EQ. Just on the tone stack going in, you tend to remove a lot of those bass frequencies and pick it up with the sliders on the outer. But it's a great way just to tighten up the front end of your guitar amp for some more articulate style riffs. <laughs> And you can hear there it really doesn't just take too many bass frequencies out of the actual product, it's just tightening your signal, which is really cool. There's loads of different ways that you can just use the EQ in the front end of an amp. You can experiment a lot. If you were to boost some of the low frequencies going in, but at the same time cancel them out and have it scooping down slightly, and then bring up and really push some of those high mids, you end up with an EQ that looks like it just doesn't make any sense, but you actually get a tone that's pretty cool. <laughs> And just experimenting with it like that, you sometimes just come up with some really cool aggressive guitar tones for the front end of your amp. But right now I'll just go through, we'll reroute it into the effects loop and we'll just go through some of the tones there, just how it reacts on the outboard side. So in the effects loop, it's after the tone stack and just before the power amp. So it really is just changing those frequencies and signals as it's leaving the amp. And this is where most people just tend to boost some of the bass, scoop out the mids and push some of those trebles just to really get that classic sort of Master of Puppets or Injustice for All style tone. <laughs> It really does become sensitive and this is just where you just do little adjustments at one time but that's really just boosted that bass huge. Let's keep going. We've scooped it a little bit but I think we got to return some of those higher frequencies. It 
It really does just give you that whole sense of like an 80s guitar tone and the vibe of that scooped. <laughs> You don't have to scoop the mids that hard. You get that really cool 80s Metallica sound. It's great to sit with on your own, but unfortunately in a mix it just goes nowhere. But from there, if we bring it back to center, I've found in the effects loop for guitar solos, if you boost around the six to 800 hertz mark, you really just get that bump that makes your leads pop through, but you don't really just get that shrill either. You can just get like almost like a Marty Friedman, like the Tornado of Soul style solo. <laughs> That's just bumping those lower mids. You don't have to do too much, but you can really just hone in on a guitar solo frequency that's really right for you. But I love using this EQ in the effects loop or the front end. It reacts beautifully with the front, but in the effects loop, it's just so simple and you can easily get a visual cue exactly what your amp is doing. And you can just change it on the fly quite easily and get some great tones out of it. But, but I really hope you enjoyed the video today just to try and get the most out of your EQ. To me, it's the most important pedal that you'll ever have, but I love all my EQs. They've got totally different personalities. The guys at Master Effects make fantastic parametric EQs. The EQ from Hell is my favorite one there. It just sits in the effects sleep so well. It's just so clean and clinical, the way that you can dial and really focus in on tones. They're a little tiny bit overwhelming to begin with, but if you understand the basic principles, fundamentals using a little six band EQ, you'll then just get used to the frequencies that we as guitar players use the most and you understand what frequencies you really can cut or boost. And then understanding the parametric EQ really just, it's no different, it's no more difficult. It's just a totally different way just to really focus in and change those frequencies. But until next time guys, I hope that someone out there is just dusting off their EQ and gonna get blown away with what they've missed all these years. But take care, I'll see you next time. Bye.